My name is Dominic Chambroni. I also go by The Shoe Surgeon. The Shoe Surgeon name comes from me trying to find an alias for what I was doing at the time. Back in high school, wearing Jordans was a cool thing, and then all of my friends had the same shoes, so I just naturally picked up an airbrush and airbrushed a pair, wore it to school, and the, the response from my friends and peers, that um, they really liked it. So it, it gave me the inspiration and motivation to keep going with it. And shoes were just a vehicle to express myself without really having to say anything. After living in North Carolina for about a year, I was schooling myself through what was going on in the world, reading. Um, so after North Carolina, I moved back to Northern California, where, where I'm from and then I started searching out shoe repair shops, you know, getting turned down multiple times, getting cursed away, just being persistent, because I don't like taking no for an answer, and I think that's what helped drive me to keep going. It was like a good eight years of my life of struggling to hone the craft, to learn more, you know, doing it wrong, to finally doing it correctly, and then once I can do it correctly, how to perfect it and get better and better every time. So right now we are uh, sewing boot camp where we are practicing sewing. Making shoes are like a, a moving puzzle. You have to do it little piece by little piece. This, if you saw, I just fucking, I brought it up. Um, oh, right, because you don't need this. Because it's going to be covered. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's good to back. It, it's good practice. I was taught where you fucking pull them all through and tie it. I was diagnosed bipolar at the age of, I think, 24, and diagnosed with a few other things, just OCD, you know, being anxious. I had the opportunity to make, like, shoes for Justin Bieber's tour. They asked me to make 10 pairs of shoes in about, uh, I think a week they needed them done. And you know, I was young and invincible, so I thought it was possible. And um, I went crazy. I ended up in a, a mental hospital. Then I was put on a lot of medication and it made me a different person. I mean, at the time it helped me level out, but then they really said I had to be on the on these this medication for the rest of my life, which then brought me to a lower depression. I started really self-medicating with drugs and alcohol to feel normal again, um, and then I ended up back in the uh, mental hospital. Luckily, I turned to age where I didn't have health insurance anymore, so I was forced to get off this medication because I couldn't afford it, and um, I just was able to choose a more natural approach and it was pretty much as simple as just being healthier, living a healthier lifestyle, making smarter choices. Once I did that, it just helped me really, f you know, focus on the craft and, and dive in deeper. Do you mind if I show you some stuff? I'll show you how to sew a little bit faster without going fast. Sure. Whenever I start sewing, like mm -hmm. this, I also just like to lift it and kind of like walk it through how I would be sewing, yeah, just to kind of see. Uh -huh. And then also like you're starting over here, which is perfect. Mm -hmm. but then when you go here, you can actually keep going where you don't oh, even have to take the needle out. And I, I like to tap. Wait, how did you just do that? Just tap. Oh. Watch my foot. That's how a lot of people sew, because you, you're in control, you know? My favorite sneaker that I've made so far, it would have to be a Supra Sky Top 4. It wasn't necessarily about the final product, but more of the story of how it came to life. I had like this colorway that I wanted to do and this idea in all grays, and then I had another colorway with reds, and I'm a procrastinator, you know, like most artists, and uh, few days before I was just like not feeling good as I like, started putting it together from one of the designs and I just I didn't like it and then it was like the night before and I was like fuck 
Like, what, what am I, what am I gonna do? And I was just sitting there in my parents' garage because that's where I was making things at the time. And I just saw some Pendleton fabric in the background. I saw some veg tan and everything just clicked. And I knew what I needed to make. And I mean, of course there was, you know, one day to finish it because I had to finish it and go down to a launch party in Los Angeles. So I literally stayed up all night long to finish this shoe. In the morning, as soon as it was eight o'clock when the shoe repair shop opened, I went over to where I was working and we put the sole on there. And then I got on a plane and flew to Los Angeles. For me, it took me 15 plus years to really hone my craft. I had to learn things from a shoe repair shop. I had to learn things from reading a book. I had to learn stuff from a traditional shoemaker. You know, I wanted to really hand make a high quality sneaker, which no one had the answers for. So I had to piece those all together. And that's why I teach now, so I can give them all of my knowledge. I can pass it on and continue to push the craft forward. And it's not just about me, it's about other people that want to be inspired again. And, you know, then they'll teach and then the younger generation are going to start, you know, making shoes or hand making um, a product and they'll respect it a little bit more. The way the sneaker industry is going, it's just resell and, you know, anything cool gets sold out because people want to buy it and resell it. And it's like, why not create your own one of one shoe? That's what we're doing with the classes where we offer a lifetime of my knowledge and expertise you know in four to five days and you know not only do they get the knowledge they learn everything from taking the shoe apart to patterning it to cutting materials picking materials learning more about materials having a, a full glossary of learning about the industry um, and then where to get this this these materials because it it's very hard to find tools it's very hard to find the stuff because shoemaking you know was non-existent in the United States because everything moved overseas so if I'm able to give back and like push the craft forward then that humbles me and also just keeps me grounded and I like being around you know other people that are inspired about the same thing <laughs>